Hello everyone and welcome to your short review of fractions. So we're going to go in kind of a different order. We're going to start with multiplication and division because those are actually easier than adding and subtracting fractions. So let's say that you're multiplying some fractions together and you're multiplying let's say two-fifths and nine-thirteenths. In order to do this, all you have to do is multiply across. So 2 times 8, or I'm sorry, 2 times 9 is 18, and 5 times 13 is 65. And that is your answer. Um, you might want to see if you can reduce it at all. It cannot be reduced in this case, so we won't worry about that. Um, but that's all you have to do is multiply across. Now, sometimes you get um, multiplication problems, and you might remember this. Let's say you have one-fourth times eight-elevenths. You might remember that you can cancel terms, right? So you can say, oh, these um, can uh, both be reduced by four. So four divided by four is one, eight divided by four is two. So now we can say, well, this becomes 1 times 2 over 1 times 11. That's called canceling, and that is totally legitimate. Okay, now with division, it's very similar, um, because what we're going to do is we're going to turn our division problem into a multiplication problem. So we have 11 nineteenths divided by 1 fourth. We are going to turn that into 11 nineteenths times 4 over 1. That's called multiplying by the reciprocal. Reciprocal, that's a fancy word for the upside down version. So now we have a nice simple multiplication problem. 11 times 4 is 44, 19 times 1 is 19. And remember the great thing about this stage of the game with math is that you are totally allowed to keep that as an improper fraction if that's what you would like to do. Okay, so addiction, uh, ad, not addiction, addiction is terrible. Addition is not nearly as bad. Um, addition and subtraction are more challenging than multiplication and division when we're talking about fractions. Um, so here's an easy problem. Let's say we had two-fifths plus one-fifth. And we know that this equals three-fifths. And we are happy when we see this kind of problem because we see that our denominators there are the same, which means that we can just add the numerators and then keep the denominator still at five. So that is uh, good news. It becomes a little bit more challenging when our denominators do not match. So here we have... 3 fourths plus 5 sixteenths. Our denominators don't match. The first thing that we need to do is get a common denominator. And I think that the common denominator that I'm going to use is 32. So that means 4 times 8 makes 32. So I would say 3 over 4 and then I would multiply this by 8 to get to the 32, and then I have to multiply the numerator by 8, and then over here, this fraction, 5 sixteenth, in order to get to 32, I have to multiply by 2, so I will do that in the numerator and the denominator. So now I have 24 over 32 plus 10 over 32, which becomes 34 over 32, and that is my answer. Now, the question that you might have for me at this stage of the game is, how did you know that the common denominator should be 32? And the first thing that I want to make clear is it doesn't have to be 32. 32 is just what I thought of. So when you determine, um, determine common denominator. You have two options. You have the power, that's this uh, uh, lightning symbol, the power of insight. That is, you just see those numbers and it comes to you, oh, both of those numbers go into 32. Fine. You could have easily had said both of those numbers go into 16 
because you could have just turned this into 16 and left this here. You could have said, oh, both of those numbers go into 160. And that would have also worked. You could have turned both denominators into 160. Um, so you just have the power of insight. If you get stuck, however, you can always multiply, multiply the denominators. So for this, you could have used 4 times 16, which I don't even know what that is. What is that? Let's see. 4 times 16 is 64. So I could have used 64 as my common denominator. Now this multiplying the denominators method is really helpful when you're dealing with more complicated type equations. Let's say, for instance, that I have 3x over 2y plus 7. And we're going to add that to 9y over 3x squared plus 4. Let's say we were going to do that. Well, that makes my head hurt to think about what um, two things could go into that. So instead, I'm just going to make my common denominator 2y plus 7 times 3x squared plus 4. And then that becomes my common denominator, and I don't have to think about things anymore. Okay, I hope this is a nice review for you for fractions. Dust off those neurons and get ready to use all that knowledge.